Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. My name is Kelly and I'm here to help you improve your design skills for your print on demand business so that you can make more sales and generate more income. If that is something that you're interested in, please hit like and subscribe and comment below your main reason for starting your print on demand journey. So in today's video, we are gonna go over how you can create this design right here. This is a really simple text design, but I am gonna show you how you can get that cool um, cutout look that you see between the top line and the middle line there. Now, it may be a little hard to tell on this mock-up, but if I go ahead and scroll down and show you on a gradient, I think you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So here you can see it with a gradient background. So you should be able to see a little bit better how we get that, um, that cut out look between that top line and that middle line right there. And so you should be able to tell the difference when I put the gradient behind it that the background color does show through. And so if you would like to learn how to do this, go ahead and stick around. So here we are on Canvas homepage, and I will be showing you guys how to create another print-on-demand design using Canva today. This design can be made for a t-shirt or pretty much anything you would like to throw it on. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna come up to this top bar here where you see custom size, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. Now I do prefer to design for 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. That is the most versatile size I've found. It's the one that I would use for pretty much all clothing, apparel, so t-shirts, sweatshirts, tank tops, things like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start with a blank page there. I also prefer to optimize my designs for the darker colors as they do tend to sell better. So unless I am designing for something very specific with a specific color in mind, I'm always gonna optimize my designs for black. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start by clicking my blank, um, my blank canvas, hitting background color and selecting black. Now today's video is gonna be pretty quick and easy. I am going to show you a little bit of a text cutout method. And uh, on the next video, we are going to make a much more detailed version using the same general technique. So today should be pretty quick and easy, hopefully. And we are just gonna do a nice funny saying. So this is gonna be all text. It is gonna say, I may be wrong, but I doubt it. And by the way, that is not trademarked. It is safe to use. And I do already have this design up on Amazon. So it is totally safe. So I am gonna go ahead and hit T on my keyboard. That will pull up a text box. And for here, I'm just gonna start with that top line. It is going to say, I may be wrong. Oops, actually, I'm gonna say I may be. Sorry, I'm gonna make wrong another line. I'm gonna hit T again, that'll pull up another text box. This time I'm gonna put wrong, and I want this one to be in all caps. So there's my wrong. And then one more text box here, hit T again and put, but I doubt it. So there we go, I may be wrong, but I doubt it. And I'm gonna make these nice and big so we can see it. And then we're gonna go ahead and select some fonts. Now you can do this any way that you like. So there's no right or wrong way. I'm gonna show you my style and then be as creative as you want with different fonts, colors, and all of that. But I'm gonna go ahead and start with some fonts. So I do kind of want that first line to be a little bit more scripty in contrast to the wrong, which I want to be a little bit more big and bold. Um, I also want it to be a little bit more narrow so that it fills up more of the page. So there's different ways we can search for fonts. So if I was to start with wrong, I could go up to font and we can do a font search. So I could search for bold, I could search for narrow. Let's go ahead and put narrow and see what comes up. And I'm looking for just narrow, bold fonts. And again, you can do anything that you want and you may wanna try out a few of them first just to see kind of what looks good, okay? So the one that I decided to go with is actually one. It's actually more of a wide one, even though it says narrow, it's wide. <laughs> or it's, it's, it says wide, but it's narrow. It's one of the narrower bold fonts. So I went and searched for bold here. Uh, let's see. So searching down through the different bold fonts. So here's the one that I have on right now, which was also on bold and on narrow. And this is the one I decided to go with. It says... Palolibus wide, even though it's a pretty narrow font, but it's also a bold font. But again, you can search and spend a lot of time playing for different fonts that you like, but I did like that one because it was pretty bold and it was pretty wide. 
So I liked that. Next, I was gonna look for some sort of a scripty font. I still wanted it to be, you know, a little thicker. I didn't want something that was super thin. And then I also wanted something that was a little bit more handwritten look, so it didn't look so formal. It looked a little bit more playful. Lots of ways you can search again. If you put script, oops, you can do, uh, you know, search for different scripty fonts. And this is actually the one I went with, which is the very first one I see here, which is Christmas Scripty Regular. And that is one that I got off of Creative Fabrica and loaded on here. Um, but there are tons of scripty fonts already available on Canva for you to use. And if you want to use fonts off of Creative Fabrica, super easy, just download them and then you can upload them here into your font section. So if I was to close this down and I can, oops, let's go back to the original area, your original fonts, there should be a thing at the bottom that says upload font and that's how you can upload fonts from Creative Fabrica. And I have a huge section here under my brand kit that's all uploaded fonts. But again, Canva has hundreds of thousands of fonts as well, so I'm sure you can find something that you would like. But this is the one that I decided to go with. It was a little bit kind of playful and it wasn't too thin. So I liked that and I do want it to overlap kind of just a smidge. And we'll play with that a little bit more. And then the last line here, but I doubt it, Okay, this one I wanted to be in all lowercase. Again, I wanted something that was a little bit thicker, but not too thick. I decided that this one um, might look good with just more of a regular, maybe even corporate style font or just handwritten style font. I did spend a long time looking, I usually do. The font that I came up with was one called, um, here it is, Claritin Narrow. So there was my Claritin Narrow right there. And I thought that that looked pretty good. So that is the basis of my design, right? And I can sort of play with the spacing now. I want this to come up pretty close. I do like to use the arrows on my keyboard. So if you find your up, down, left, right arrows, you can use those to move any text box or any graphic one pixel at a time, up, down, left, or right. So it's great for making those little micro adjustments if you're having trouble with your mouse. Um, if you can't do that, you can always try zooming in on the page down here. So sometimes if you zoom in really tight, it makes it a little bit easier to make some little movements, but I just like to use my keyboard. So now I like the way that this looks. I do want a little bit of contrast in color because as I've got this, you know, overlapping, I want it to stand out a little bit more. So with that, I just decided to make the wrong a slightly different color. I decided to go with something that was more of a sort of redder tone like that. You can use, again, anything that you want. I just decided red would be good, it's wrong. And I do want it to be in the back. So I'm gonna hit control in my left bracket. So control in your left bracket will send um, the font to the back. Control in your right bracket will send it to the front. So um, it's always nice to use those little keyboard shortcuts. If you don't, um, if you don't know the keyboard shortcuts or you don't wanna use them, you can always click on anything, go up to where it says position it will show you, you know, where things are and you can put to front all the way to the front. You can move it to the back right now. It's already all the way at the back. You can align it so you can do things like that. You could also just right click on it and it'll pull up another tab here where again, you can put layer and then you can bring to the front, bring to the back, but it'll tell you if you just go ahead and hit control and your right or left bracket, you can bring things forward and backwards. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how you can get that cutout technique. So where you have fonts that are overlapping like this, I can get sort of that cutout look around it. And so I've seen that on a lot of things. It looks really cool. This one's gonna be really simple. There's only a few places where it's overlapping. I'm gonna show you the technique real quick. And then in our next video, we are going to do a much more complex design. So starting here, what you're gonna do is put an outline around whatever you want um, to have that cut out around. So for example, the I may be that's on the top, that's the one we're gonna wanna put the outline around. So we'll go over to effects. 
and we are going to go to the outline effect here and you're going to want to select black so it has to match your background color whatever you pick for your background color you want that to be the color you use for your outline so you can already see here that with a black background it already looks like you're getting that cutout feature so you can see the way that looks now obviously if i was to change my background color here just so that you could see it you can see that it's just outlined like that but when we put it on a black page it looks as though it's cut out so in order to get our cutout, we are going to save it and we are going to do a background remover on it so i'm going to go ahead and just add another page here so i've already got my second page down here and i'm going to move my second page color just real quick to sort of a darker black just so that you'll be able to see the difference and when I have two pages now, I can title them separately. So for this first page, I'm going to put, I may be wrong, and I'll just put black. So that's like my, my first thing. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go over to the right-hand side where it says share. And you're going to go down to download. Now you still want it to be a PNG, but at this point I do not want a transparent background. I want that black so I can do the background remover. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick the page that I want when there's more than one page. Just go ahead and select the page you want. So right now I just have page one. I'll hit done and I'll hit download. Now that'll download it. And then all we're gonna do is go ahead and now upload it over here on the side. So where we're on our side tabs, if you go ahead and you go to uploads, you can go ahead and upload file. Once you've uploaded it, you can go ahead and bring it over to this page. And now we can see we've got that solid black background. I put it on a dark gray just so that you can see the difference. And then from here, all we have to do is use a background remover that will cut out all the black, including the outline around this word, which will give you that gap that you want. So if I was to take this and do a background remover on it, give it a second, it should turn out pretty perfectly. And there you go, so that looks perfect right there. And so what we can see, I'm gonna make it nice and big here, is when it cut out the black, it also cut out the black outline. So now you've got that nice gap there, which means whatever color shirt I choose to put it on, I'm still gonna get that gap. So when you sell shirts, you might wanna sell more than one color. So Obviously black looked good, but let's say I wanted to do a dark blue. Well, I'm still gonna get that awesome gap there. So that works out perfectly. I wouldn't do red, but again, you can see that nice gap there. So no matter what color I choose, it's gonna look pretty good. And so now it is ready to go. And obviously this is sized for a t-shirt or a sweatshirt, a tank top. But again, you could pretty much put this on anything you want. So a tote bag, a pillow, I mean, and be as creative as you want. You don't have to limit your designs to just one product. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and title this one. And I'm gonna put, I may be wrong, and I'm gonna call it the cutout. So I know it's the, the version I want. For this one, we're gonna go ahead and hit share. We're gonna download, it's a PNG, and this time we want that transparent background. So we want that nice cutout look, and we're gonna pick the page that we want. This time we want page two, and I'm gonna hit done, and download, and it will download it. And then from there, it'll be saved to your downloads, and you can go to whatever platform you are using, upload it, and it will be ready to go. If you have any questions about this, drop it in the comment section below. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. I am trying to grow this channel and start a little bit of a community for people. So I do have a link below for a Facebook page that's been up for a while, but you guys can start using that to communicate with one another, ask questions, things like that. Um, if you have, again, requests for videos, throw that in the comment section below. I'll see if I can add you to my list. And go ahead and just let me know what your main goals are and what, what can I help you achieve for your print-on-demand business. You can put that in the comments section below or go over to that Facebook page and put a comment there. I hope you guys are doing really good with your fourth quarter sales and I do hope to see you guys again. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative, and we'll see you next time.